I'm Jake, you're watching Gas Guzzlers, and we are joined by a very special guest today, the off-roading legend, Burn from Burn On Cars. And we also have another special guest, the all-new Hyundai Kona. So the exterior of the Kona, mm -hmm. Kona's available in EV, ICE, and hybrid. Wow. Hyundai's making us do our homework on this one. Yeah, yeah. But to make it even more difficult, it's pretty much impossible to tell which one is which based on the front of the vehicle. Now that's unusual for cars offered in all these different variants because usually you need a different grill to let in more air for the combustion engine, which needs to breathe oxygen. And you generally want less intakes on the electric vehicle because you wanna keep the air out. You wanna maximize aerodynamics. Hyundai said, well, we wanna maximize aerodynamics on the ga gas, the ICE model and the hybrid model as well. So all versions of the Kona have these flaps at the front, which stay closed when the ICE engine or the battery or whatever doesn't need air. And then they open up when that oxygen is needed. And the end result is pretty much all Konas look the same from the front. But Vern, what do you like about this exterior? I find it interesting that this is an evolution of the Kona's design with the split headlights, the headlights that are lower down here. Their LEDs on this one. I also find the light bar on the top very interesting as well. It reminds me of the current gen Kia Soul, but it's LED on this and it makes it look very futuristic and it's very aerodynamic and streamlined looking. On the side of the Kona, you can see that it is all new for this year. It's bigger and wider and more spacious on the interior. But the thing that you can really notice is the color. This is neurotic yellow, a wild color. Absolutely, you know, this color made me think that was the EV version, but there's a way to tell from the side if you have an EV or ice variant. Here's how you tell. This black cladding right here, it's black on the hybrid and on the ice model. You go for the EV, this is gonna be body color. But regardless of what version of the Kona you get, you get digital key. So you can just use your phone or your Apple Watch or your Samsung Android watch, and you don't even need the key, you just use that as your key. And that enables you to like text the key to people and all sorts of crazy things like that. Ah, you can share your car. I don't like that. I, the way you said that makes me not like it. You can share. In the rear of the Kona, you can also see that the design is very similar to the front with the light bar on the top and the split tail lights down here. It really looks like the front. I also found this chrome trim on the spoiler very interesting because it swoops into the window trim. But because this one is a limited, you have a power tailgate, which is a very nifty feature, and that reveals 25 cubic feet of volume. But if you want a little bit more, you can drop the 60-40 split rear seat and get 60 cubic feet of volume. There's also a spare tire underneath, a donut, but it is a spare tire. Yeah, that is a rarity these days. But you mentioned the 60-40 split mm -hmm. seat. And I, I got a little thing to say to Hyundai about that. Hyundai, I read your European marketing material and in Europe, you offer a 40-20-40 split seat, but you stick us Americans with a 60-40 mm. split, which means that if we wanna put skis in the car, we have to lose a full size seat. Yeah. That is not cool, Hyundai. No. We want our 60, no, we don't want our 60-40 split seat. We want, we want 40, our 40-20-40. Exactly, yes. we want 40-20-40. I'm protesting. Hyundai, give us the 40 20 40, please. please. On the interior of the Kona, it's a very welcoming place. If you've been in a Hyundai in the last four or five years, you're gonna feel right at home. And if you haven't, you're gonna learn pretty quickly. It's a pretty intuitive spot. And Honda has carried over a lot of the smart little knickknacks they've come up with in the last few years into this vehicle. For example, you have these magic cup holders which slide away and become a full-size storage tray. And then when you go to Taco Bell and get your Baja Blast, you push this button and a magic cup holder appears. That is a smart use of space. They've also introduced some new innovations on this vehicle. For example, you have a USB-C port right here. You're saying, okay, Jake, my car is a USB-C port. This one is different. There is a button here that allows you to switch between a USB-C port that solely provides power and then you can turn it into a USB port that supplies both power and data connection between your phone and your vehicle. We're not quite sure what the purpose of this is. I have a theory that either A, it's to prevent your phone from interfering with the car and sending data when you don't want it to, because then the car gets confused and it's like, do you want me to play music from your phone or the radio? 
simpler to just have a pure power connection. My other theory is that this may be cybersecurity related. For those of you who are more cybersecurity conscious and like to keep, you know, data ports separate because a, a very common attack now is for data ports to be infected and things get cross contaminated and all that. This is kind of a nice cybersecurity feature from that perspective. So I'm still not entirely sure what the purpose of that is, but we'll find out. Dual 12.3 inch screens, very familiar if you've been in a Hyundai product. It's set up just like a smartphone or a tablet, very intuitive. You got fun features in there like the quiet mode, which is gonna dim all of the cabin audio in the back so that you, if you have someone sleeping back there, they will sleep fine. My big complaint about the interior here, the shifter here, it's in a weird spot, your knee hits it. Just give us a normal button or dial or, or something other than this, please, Hyundai. In the back seat of the Kona, I'm actually pretty impressed by the amount of space that you get. Let's shut the door. Nice, solid dunk. It really feels decent back here, especially compared to the competition. Materials are decent, this soft touch material. You get soft touch armrests back here. In terms of space, I'm five foot nine and my knees have a decent amount of space and I can fit my feet under the seat. I also have pretty decent headroom, even though this car has a sunroof. In terms of other creature comforts, there's two USB type C ports. There's also a place where you could put your phone down here and there's also air vents a lot of cars at this price point don't offer air vents this also has a nice center armrest with two small cup holders and it's pretty soft only one map pocket back here but in general it's actually a pretty accommodating place to be under the hood of the new gas kona we have a 1.6 liter turbocharged and direct injected four cylinder. It makes 190 horsepower and it's a reasonably efficient motor and it's paired to an eight speed automatic transmission. But what MPGs does it get? Yeah, 24 city, 29 highway, which is fine. That's not bad for a powerful, well, powerful turbo car like this. And it's all wheel drive. So we're going to see how the power is with this 1.6 turbo. Wow, this thing lacks throttle response. Oh, okay. What mode are we in? This is normal mode. It's actually not that bad. It actually, I felt like it was slower when we first got going, but it just, the pedal has a lot of travel in it. You really have to push it all the way down. The car is speaking. <laughs> yeah. That is a very Hyundai thing, right? For your car to just start talking to you. It's a very tech focused company. Oh yeah. Uh, it seems to think that we're trying to do a GPS route or something. Oh, yeah. But an interesting fact about this car while you try to figure out how to shut it up. Yes. Is that actually, so I mentioned this car is available as EV, ICE, hybrid. It's one of the few cars with all three of those combos available. Um, something that's kind of interesting yeah. is that Hyundai first engineered the EV version and then oh. they shoved the gas version in and made it work. Interesting. Which is the opposite way of how it's yeah. normally done in these multi-platform cars. Yeah. So I guess my question to you as the driver is, does it feel like this gas power plant was an afterthought? Does it feel like it belongs here? What's, what's the kind of vibe there? I mean, to me, it feels like it belongs because when you put your foot down, it is smooth power. You just have to really put your foot down. Okay. And even in normal mode, well, even in sport mode, like sport and normal mode, it doesn't really matter with the throttle response. It's not like sport mode makes it any faster, but it's decent power. I think it's more than adequate for a lot of people that are just gonna be daily driving this. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I kind of was thinking recently, a lot of people describe the Honda CRV as an NPC car. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like the anti-NPC car. Yeah. I mean, you don't see an NPC in a video game driving yeah. a car this color yellow. Yeah, this That's color, like this. and it looks like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's bold, it's bold. Um, and the power plant doesn't quite match the boldness, but it doesn't need to. No. Um, you and I were having a conversation earlier that like, just because we don't like a car, it doesn't feel like it was made for us, that doesn't make it a bad car because no. there are people other than us who need cars. Exactly. Um, as much as auto journalists would love to believe that's not the case. Yeah. But uh, I found out how to cancel the route. <laughs> Woo, victory, Woo! victory. Yeah. Nice. Here we go, into the twisties. Into the corner. How do the twisties feel? I mean, it handles well. There is, I mean, a little bit of body roll, but if you're, yeah. if you're driving it normally, it's pretty composed. It rides very nice. That's Even sure. with these big wheels. They're 18s, I think, on this Limited. Yeah. It rides nice. It, like, it feels like a premium-esque or premium-ish 
little crossover if you're compare oh but like there's just a lot of lag with the throttle it's very annoying yeah yeah you know what i thought was kind of interesting you mentioned the wheels mm -hmm. the wheels on this gas version kind of look like ev wheels you know how ev wheels yeah. are all covered up to prevent, yeah to prevent turbulence and all that they definitely gave the wheels here the same treatment i'm sure they're the same wheels between the ev and the um gasoline version yeah, yeah. i think so but, yeah i kind of need to see yeah but it it drives pretty nice even in gas form the transmission i don't really feel the shifts and it's quick at shifting but it feels like a nice composed daily driver the seats are comfortable too like they offer a good amount of support and they're nice and soft, so I like that. Actually, you know what? I didn't notice the seats, which I guess is a good thing, right? Yeah. You kind of just want that part of the car to fade into the background, and it certainly does. Yeah. Um, what else do we get? We get features like a sunroof, which is nice. It, it definitely makes it feel bright in here. I noticed, I don't know if you've noticed this, a lot of the cars at the rally today feel very dark inside. Yeah, a lot of dark interiors make yeah. me feel like I'm in a cave. Yeah, dark interior, small, aggressive window lines. This guy doesn't know how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna go. I don't either. <laughs> Dang. And off we go again. Another hard acceleration in the Hyundai Kona EV or gasoline. Yeah. You know, we were in the Mercedes uh, a bit earlier today in the AMG, e, what was it? E. It was the GLE. GL, GLE 63 AMG plus. 63. S, yeah. because Germany refuses to name cars Refuse. in a normal manner. Yeah. Um, but this is not as fast as that. No. But this is also about one fifth of the price, I think? Yeah, I would say so. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this Kona first look. I've been Jake. I'm Burn. And uh, we hope to see you on both our channels. Be sure to check out Burn on Cars. Like and subscribe to both channels. Keep an eye out for more WAPA rally content from both of us and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. All right, take care, folks. Bye, peeps. Let's get a quick Hello. bio on Burn here. Hello. We are going to be looking at my shits, and there's an Alfa Romeo Giulia that is right by here. We can do Let's a commentary as he slowly pulls away that 2.9 liter V6 engine. And also you can see this new Hyundai Kona. Wow, that thing's screaming. This Hyundai Kona doesn't scream with its 1.6 liter turbocharged engine and H-Track all-wheel drive. Don't you want that? You want it real bad, the Hyundai Kona. <laughs> Freak. 360 shock. 360. All right. Okay.